You're now tuned into the Fully Put Podcast with Mace, French and Pox. Enjoy the listen. Where to go? Tell me where to go. Use my airline for the boys. Tell me where to go. Tell me where to go. Alright, cool. I'm going to continue because the next part is quite poignant. Emotional relearning and recovery from trauma. Mm. Dr. Judith Lewis Herman cites three stages in trauma recovery. One, attaining a sense of safety. Two, remembering the details of the trauma and mourning the loss and the loss it's brought. Three, re-establishing a normal life. So in the book, it actually breaks down these things and there's, a, there's paragraphs in each, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to go into it now. So temper- temperament is not destiny. So this question for you guys. Does our biology fix our emotional destiny or can even an innately shy, shy child grow into a more confident adult? 100%. Definitely. Definitely. I, I think, again, it's related back to our previous season, but I, I genuinely believe that we are plastic and we can mould and change. Hmm. Um I've got a cousin that was, I remember him telling me a story of how, actually I don't know if I want to relate it to that, might not be the best example, but basically, um, they was a a shy, uh, a bully child per se, Mm. and yeah, I think almost like a switch changed and they became the total, like they had an experience uh, where they got beaten up or bullied to such an extent that something snapped and they became the total opposite. I'm not saying that to be a good example, but just the fact that you you may be a shy child, but it doesn't mean that you're going to be a shy adult. Mm-hmm. Right? There's there's definitely room for you to change and become whatever it is that you want to be. Yes, environment, circumstance, in my opinion, environment, yeah. circumstances. So there's a few factors. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd like to, I think I was relatively shy mm-hmm. and then become a bit more confident, a bit more louder. Yeah. So I think there's definitely room. Yeah, there's plenty of time. I think there's so many different mm. things that will affect your your maturity and how you develop into an adult. So, um, yeah, I think there's definitely time to change, but there's got to be... Sometimes it can be something real um, impactful, as in, like, happened once and it changes you. Yeah. Or, dare I say, an intervention that happens over a period of time. Better than that, there's an app for it. That's <laughs> good. Right. So the book actually has a states has the clearest answer to this. The clearest answer to this question comes from the work of Jerome Kagan, an eminent development psychologist at Harvard University. Kagan points out that there are four temperamental types: timid, bold, upbeat, and melancholy. Melancholy. Thank you. And each is due to a different pattern of brain activity. Part of Kagan's studies involved mothers bringing their infants and toddlers to his institute over decades. And over time, Kagan and his researchers identified early signs of shyness in a group of 21-month-old toddlers brought for an emotional observation. In free play, some toddlers were bubbly and spontaneous. Others would cling to their mothers and be more reserved. When When Kagan researched these same toddlers again four years later, none of the outgoing bubbly children were timid whilst two-thirds of the timid ones were still reticent. Kagan believes that children who are overly sensitive and fearful grow into shy and timorous adults. Any thoughts on Kagan's beliefs, by the way? I can understand the, the thought process of if you're a timid and shy child, then you're going to be a timid and child, timid, timid and shy, shy uh, youth or, yeah. But as Poker just pointed out, there's plenty of these yeah, no, 21, 21 month yeah. folds or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. There's, t- there's, there's plenty of time to, like, within three or four years, yes, you may still be similar to how you was, but okay, give it another 20 years. I mean, I understand the statement, and it's, yeah, it's a nice. general one. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there might be a reason why it's a general statement. Um, it's because it's by and large. By and large, mm-hmm. those who are timid are going to become, or those who yeah, are going to become 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 timid. Um, but there's that's... definitely room for improvement. Cool. Right, nothing bothers me, the cheerful temperament. By nature, some people's emotions seem to gravitate towards the positive pole. 
These people are naturally upbeat and easygoing, while others are dour and mel- melancholy. melancholy. Yeah. Um, Pox, do you want to conclude on to the next chapter? Um, yeah, I will do. Just want to open up. Okay, superb. So this chapter, I think, is essentially based on emotional intelligence. So it's chapter five. Okay, so I will start us off. Um, the cost of emotional literacy. Um, there was an incident in a school where two boys fell out over a small disagreement. Something trivial had exploded and ended with two boys being shot dead in the school hallway. There are puppies in this book. There is, there is, there is. There is. Um, the incident, chilling as it is, can be read as yet another sign of a desperate need for lessons in handling emotions, settling disagreements peaceably, and playing just getting along. As one Brooklyn teacher put it, the present emphasis in school suggests we care more about how well we school children um, to read and write whether th- rather than whether they'll be alive next week. Um, can you give an example as a child mm. or with your experience with children where emotional literacy was an issue? Um, it can be something simple, but for me, at times I didn't enjoy being at home, which I mentioned before, which went on to affect my concentration and confidence, probably primarily in school. Um, and having obviously worked with children, I've seen these same issues. What's the actual question? Uh, sorry, um, can you give me an example of where emotional illiteracy was an issue? Maybe as a child. It might be with yourself or it might be with someone else in particular. Emotional illiteracy. Illiteracy. Is that the question? Well, unable to, to voice your emotions. Yeah, I mean, like something trivial obviously ended up with two, with two boys being shot dead in the hallway. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Um... Yeah, uh, you know what? I've I think I've spoken about this before as well. Sometimes if I get like if I get really angry about something, I can't voice out what I need to say, and it, and you just end up building up, building, building, building up. You just want to lash out. So I can I can understand that that not understand why you'd shoot someone over that. Yeah, because you shouldn't have that on you. But like, I I can understand, and I've been there before. There was an example the other day I gave of road rage where actually yeah it ran to my head. And then, really and truly, I should have been, even when we, I pulled up next to the car, it was more, what? Uh, you no, know, like, you know, aggressive fool. Whereas you, there was actually, the driver of that car was very calm, just like, you know, you should have let me go. Whereas yeah. the passenger then was giving me looks, and I, what? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. So I can see why that, why that occurs. And yeah, it, for me, it occurs when you're, you're, you're so built up in heat at the moment, you don't have your, uh, your your BPM device on you, <laughs> and, and you um, and you end up just lashing out, and then probably about five or ten minutes later, you're just like, what? Like, right. Why? Yeah. Like, it's just, I'm actually with you. Um, I can relate that to a childhood memory that I've got. Um, I mean, it's not the only time that it has been. I think in general, when I think about it, I'm when I get heated, I'm not that good at talking. Mm. But um, in regards to the, the example I'm thinking about. I remember being at a, uh, I don't even know if it might have been my god brother's party, but yeah, I was at my god brother's house, and he's, I think he's, yeah, about four or five years older than me. Must have been, again, quite young. Um, might have been about, I say, eight, nine, possibly, but yeah, about eight, nine. And for whatever reason, he, he was with his friends or whatever, and I wanted to come in and play and whatever, whatnot. And I had like, for some reason, I was having a, either a discussion or argument with my older god brother, and I got heated to the point where I didn't want to talk no more. So instead of like either leaving and not having this conversation no more, I picked up one of his roller skates and I licked it over his head. And obviously, I'm the younger sibling. Like I'm, the, I'm the younger sibling in the situation, so like, he's gone off crying, whatever, whatnot, and I've got into my trouble. But that's what I, I'm, I'm relating to that when you can't use your words yeah. and you just lash out and you just do something. And yeah, that's that's definitely a situation that I felt I've been in. I remember even just like, you know, in school um, and you said about cussing matches. Yeah. Like, oh, he bleeds yeah, you, he yeah, yeah. you. Yeah. I wasn't good at that, bro. I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah. fuck that, let's fight. Yeah. Like, that was kind of my go to. If I can't, like, if I can't. I'll cuss you or I'll do you in like a slanging match. But like, it's a fight then, isn't it? Like, because, like, I'm not saying I'm, I'm the world's greatest fighter or nothing, but I'd rather just, I'll scrap it out 
and do this less. Do you know what I mean? That's that was how I used to handle a situation. There was actually you, you made me laugh with that because. I can't remember what year we was in. There was actually one time I think I cussed Lawrence and he chased me around the playground. Don't surprise me. <laughs> Don't surprise me. He was, he's not very good with that type of thing. No, I'm, not, I'm definitely not. He's not very good at that type of stuff. I'm not good. I'm not good. Like, we can be having banner and I, I, I can't, like, not to say I can't, but yes. You know, some people are good at going into and I, I just, I'll shut down and I'll be like, all right. Cool. Yeah, you need to do that quiet one. Yeah, cool. All right, cool, cool, cool. Let's have a punch up. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Um, signs of deficiency can be seen in violent incidents, such as the shooting of Ian and Tyrone. Um, growing ever common, sorry, mm, growing ever co- growing ever more common in American schools. But these are more than isolated incidences. Um, to which I wanted to discuss the issues in the UK. I had an Uber journey recently where we discussed these issues: gun and knife crime. Where, from my point of view, not all the incidents are isolated and carry deeper issues around them. In the time of the incident, but all but more so prior to which we discussed um, social economics, parental issues, and social media, among other things. I was stating and gave you an example that you're young, for example, and have either had so and he either lost a friend or he has been stabbed or shot. With all that's going on, obviously, in your life already, and not unfortunately being mature enough um, to yet manage your emotions, impulse decisions are likely. I'm not saying it's right or I condone these actions, but I understand it. Have you ever had to show restraint before battle? And my example, I remember, <laughs> this is fine, not even before battle, but I'll say during battle. Now, I don't even remember, I tell you, I've been thinking about this place all day long, but I can't remember it. When we all went away to, when we were 16, 17. Malia. Malia, thank you. And we all get in. We got in that massive. We got in that massive yeah, scuff. Yeah, yeah, cool. So I want you go probably would know the guys. They were from Bush. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're from Bush and Fulham. Yeah. So like, I d- yeah, I know they're from Bush anyway. They're from mm. Bush and Fulham. All right. Yeah. So I was gonna kind of just cut to the chase. So forget how it started and how it kind of ended, but we'll get towards the end. And Lee will have his take on it as well. Mm-hmm. So I can't remember how it started, but I just remember the ending from my point of view. Let's say both, everyone had egos bruised from both sides. All right. And I remember at the very end, there was this one in particular guy who everyone said was the African guy. And I just remember everyone's naming him that, all right? And I remember I coming close to him, almost was going to front him up. And I remember, I'm not going to say the individual's name. He was like, Andrew, just step away. I didn't know what he was talking about at the time, all right? Because mm. um, I was that close, I couldn't see what he was talking about. And I don't know if the person either tapped me and just said, just step away, or whether I looked down and then I, then I stood away. At that point... Was knife crime prevalent? I can't remember at the time. Mm. Um, but I ended up stepping up and seeing what he had. Yeah, bore us up. Yeah, all right. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, so what, the point I was making, I wasn't too sure many people I knew had been stabbed, stabbed. Yeah. I remember taking a step away. Um, and it was a case from, I think from there on in, certainly from that day onwards, it was like, this is done, far as we're concerned. It wasn't a case of this person won or this person lost. Yeah. It's like, we've had, we all had a fight. Eagles yeah. been bruised, yeah, yeah, people yeah. been punched, blah, blah. Yeah. Let's leave it there as such. Well, mm-hmm. Do you know, I remember that because the next day, you know, quite a few people from our side went and bought knives, right? There you go. So that was actually what I was leaving. And, to. I, and I remember thinking in my head, well, they happened like, I think what has happened last night, that's it. No one got hurt. Yeah. Like the, ne- the next day, because you see the same people on the strip every day. Yeah, and yeah. we saw them the next day and yeah. it was squashed. Yeah. Like it was like, oh, yeah, remember like, like move from where smash your wrist. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. BS. <laughs> and it, it basically got squashed. But I remember some guys on our side bought knives. I kept thinking in my head, this, like, no, you don't, yeah. you, you're looking for something now. Mm-hmm. You go on, because next, because if, if it, we were to see the next day and it kicked off, now you join something, now actually someone has to do something because mm-hmm. we know that they've got stuff as well. Yeah. And then that's when, you know what I mean, it's real yeah. drama. So there's my restraint. So restraint at the time, where, well, if I'm honest, there was only one winner there. If he had the knife and I didn't have a knife, he was going to win that battle there anyway. Yeah, it was a case of, actually, take a step back. This one's done for us, my son. All right? And then even the following day, when others went to go get bits and pieces, yeah. and they asked everybody, yo, yeah, yeah, we're this, going is what, to, yeah. What, this is what we're on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you coming? Yeah, I did. And I was like, nah, boy, you know I'm, I'm not in the right I'm involved. I'm I said, like, I'm not involved anyway, but then you want to do all that stuff in Greece and... Yeah, nah, boy. Yeah. yeah. So that was somewhere where actually restraint, this is done. Everyone, a couple of people got a few bruised egos and stuff like that. Yeah. Let's just leave it there kind of thing, not a problem. So mm-hmm. there's one example of where I felt I was showing restraint. I'm sure there's many, but there's yeah. one. Certainly as a young man. Um, I'm trying to think whenever I showed restraint. Um, I'm, I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have. 
uh, that you talking about that reminded me of um, when we uh, when we was in Temple New Year's Eve and we flipping turned the place upside down. Like, what? <laughs> 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 if we luck up, <laughs> yeah, that is funny, bro. I just remember all the man them fighting the bouncers and that, mm-hmm. and like. Take man was throwing tables, man was throwing chairs. But it was fun though, man. I'm not gonna lie, bro. It was fun, bro. Man literally locked off the whole dance so like. And I remember this. What kicked it off? Do you remember? I don't know, bro. One of the man them. One of them. You know how it goes. One of the man them got in a problem with someone or a bouncer or something. I just remember man chucking tables and turn like. Do you know what I mean? But um, in regards to can I, can I recall when I've held a string? Nothing springs to mind at the moment, but that's not to say... It hasn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not going to say it hasn't or it hasn't occurred or I've been in this situation where it's just like... I've, I, I tend to be the one that calms shit down, to be honest with you. So, it's not a case of I'm, I'm going mad and I thought in the middle of it, no, actually, let me not kick his head off. But, um, yeah, no, I'll definitely say that there's, there's been an example one way or another. I can't think of a cool one right now. I can think of one on the top of my head, and I th- might have said it before, but it was when I was actually dating someone years ago, and I think we'd just breaking up or split up, but we were still speaking. But obviously, you know when you just broke up or split up, and we're still speaking, all of a sudden, this person feels they can talk to you in a way. <laughs> like, that they've never talked to you before, and you're like, no, no, you still got to have that same respect for me. Yeah. But this speaks to I remember I left the house, boy. I think my cousin was... I, 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 um, at my house at the time and like I said and I just stormed out of the house I was must have been about 19 18 no 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 what am I talking about I was about 20 I must have been about 20 21 mm. I stormed out of the house and I, was dri- I remember I was driving to Nando's in Park Real because I knew that's where they were and I was going to go and call kick up a real fuss in there <laughs> <laughs> trust me I was going to go and up a real fuss it wasn't even a joke I was really going to go in there I was going to grab someone by their hair and just mm. really go to town on, mm. on the lady right yeah. I remember I got in the car I was zooping down the A40 and I that's I remember I showed real restraint because I remember my mum was ringing my phone ringing my phone leave bed I'm home now mum was ringing my phone because I was raging I saw I saw burgundy boy <laughs> <laughs> that's gone past <laughs> red boy <laughs> I saw I saw the next kind of red so, rum yeah. red rum I remember I, I showed it and I was, I was happy obviously I'm happy I showed restraint because I could have something stupid yeah, no, of course, of course. All right, cool. Um, I'm going to touch on this a bit later, uh, but I thought I'd give an example where not having, but educating children on their emotional intelligence is beneficial. Okay. Now, Duke University works with anger-ridden children between six and 12 weeks, um, twice a week, to which following these classes, the children were able to understand perspectives. Um, they were taught anger control methods, enacting out scenarios, and monitoring their feelings and cues, de-escalated um, their anger rather than act out impulsively um, to which is something we kind of touched on um, a little earlier in regards to the type of impact I think you can have whether it's um, having an intervention over a long period of time or see where it potentially could actually change these people's lives or sometimes obviously things can happen dare I say in an instant where it can change people's lives cool. um, poverty itself delivers emotional sorry poverty itself delivers emotional blows to children Poor children at age five are already more fearful, anxious, and sad than their better off peers, and have more behavioural problems such as frequent tantrums and destroying things, a trend that continues through the teen years. Um, the press for pro- apologies, um, the press for poverty corrodes family life too. There tend to be few expressions of parental warmth, more depression in mothers who are often more single and jobless and a greater reliance on harsh punishments such as yelling, hitting, and physical That's from threats. parents who come from a poorer background, and on children, single. from okay, single parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. So obviously- and parents that um, depend on benefits. Okay. Cool, so Mason, obviously, and then, um, now Mason, obviously, you might be able to touch on this a little bit, mm. um, if you remember, if you remember, mm. um, more so than myself, in a message, in a message or article that was forwarded recently in regards to one of the conservative MPs. I don't even remember um, where I think this individual was talking about specifically, I can't remember the whole thing entirely, he was talking specifically about women from council estates. Was it the black guy? Yeah. And what did he say? 
I thought you were the name more. Should I name his name? Um, I think his name is David Lammy. No, no, it wasn't. No, no, it's no, it's Labour, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Sean Bailey, I think his name is. His yeah, name's Sean. That's Bailey. it. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I think his name's Sean. I can't remember exactly what he said. I can't actually remember what he said, but he just he had a disregard for for single mothers and a council estate and yeah. something like that. But then it might have got taken out of context because he himself was raised that way, and it was almost like it's a test for it's a test for. It wasn't a test for people, it was the test for the situation of for this it was a test for that situation, for people involved in that situation, that that shouldn't be right in this day and age. Mm. A single parent household council estate. That was what his point was. Yeah. I mean even when I thought that was a comment which maybe you should have thought about maybe. Yeah, it's a lot about considering because it made it sound like you're just you're nothing. Yeah, which yeah, I mean for someone who coming from his background, because I think he came from that type of background yeah. as well, for him to then have disregard for Individuals who essentially grow up with is a bit. Um, people, it happens when yeah, people forget where they come from, isn't it? Yeah, very, very true. Um, anyway, um, long term studies of hundreds of children brought up in poverty in abusive families or by a parent with severe mental illness show that those who are resilient in the face of the most grinding hardships tend to share key emotional skills. These include a winning sociability that draws people to them, self-confidence and optimistic um, persistence in the face of failure and frustration, the ability to recover quickly from upsets and an easygoing nature. Um, I thought I'd add, obviously, contrast um, contrast to that and maybe talk on that from a personal point of view. Okay. Now, I'm talking about, can you talk about from the personal, personal point of view in terms of um, obviously, despite all maybe these setbacks and obviously coming from that type of that type of background, in terms of maybe showing a bit more perseverance and dare I say a bit of drive. Yeah, I mean, just to, to quote um, Drake, started from the bottom. Yeah. Like when it comes to like, I'm guessing what you're referring to is um, coming from um, a low income family mm. and persevering, like. I, I for one come from a working class family. We we didn't have no silver spoon. We had to make do. We had to, um, do you know what I mean? Go through some cold days, some harsh days, and whatever whatnot, whatever it, whatever it may be needed to get through those times. And yeah, it does build character. It makes you um, appreciate a lot more. Be grateful. And I can only, as I said, I can only experience from experience in regards that it's made me the person that I am and I'm happy with the person that I am um, is that is that what you're referring to or? yeah I mean just I mean not that I'll go first and such but I mean the things that I was thinking of is not essentially just telling your story but obviously there's many many we spoke about kids who've come from very very difficult backgrounds um, to the point where we personally don't actually see no future for them whereas obviously we've we've grown up and probably had maybe a wider spectrum a wider spectrum and seen kids who have struggled our own peers who are struggled yeah, yeah. and because of maybe I don't want to say hopes and dreams but because of aspirations and because of our difficulties is a case of actually I've got to use this to drive me and push me towards this direction rather than going that direction where there is no there's no hope of return. But it's not it's not so clear cut. I wouldn't say that's always so clear cut because depending on your environment and your peers that you choose to move around can also help determine where you may see is an uh, ongoing uh, lifestyle mm. or uh, a way of life. For me, it's just not what you just get on with it. You see how I know you guys were saying I'm very cold in before? Mm. I think it's not that I'm cold, it's just, just get on with it. Like You just need to get on and just get on and get on and get on with it. Mm-hmm. It's, just, it's just the reality of life. And I think that's where that that's where my drive comes from. It's just get on with it. People are like, oh, how do you do this? How do you do this? Why are you throwing this shit? You just get on with it. You <laughs> <laughs> is cold. No, no, just get on with it. How can you? I can never do that. Yes, you could. It's it's mind over matter. Yeah, 100%. you could do it. No. It's not. It's not. There's people out here doing seventy hour shifts mm. elsewhere. Really out here doing that. And you're saying you can't do an extra seven, eight hour top up on your nine to five where you're not doing much anyway. Come on, let's be really <laughs> When he man. says that, come on. That's <laughs> <what> <laughs> I don't know where you got them, but you said it more frequently. No, but it's true. 
You just want that extra Saturday night to go party and stuff like that. Yeah, but what's, I don't want to say what sets you apart, but let's be honest. I mean, I mean, obviously, the statement which I read out kind of provides a bit of contrast. So we spoke about kids who have come from difficult backgrounds and struggle with your whole emotional intelligence, but there's kids who use that to their advantage actually to propel them on to different, yeah. to, to different, pla- to different places. Yeah. And I don't want to say, let's think of examples, but I don't know if I've, I've explained myself well enough in terms of my examples, but <laughs> yo, I mean, we've all given examples today in terms of things being very, very difficult. I mean, far as I'm saying, things, obviously things can get worse, mm-hmm. right? Because we've got a sense of gratitude in terms of where we come from. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, allowing things to get worse is only going to put you in a more difficult plight in order to get yourself back up there. Mm-hmm. I mean, the things we've seen and been through and even heard of other people have been through, mm-hmm. I mean, it's crazy in itself. I mean, yeah, to the point where, I don't know, I mean, I've always said it personally myself. I've never understood why people don't have, um, not necessarily direction, because that can be very, very difficult. But I think I've always personally had a goal from a very very young age so personally I've always found it very very difficult to understand why I wouldn't use something such as using my plight to my advantage or using it as a leverage and when you say yeah. as a plight or leverage are you talking about um like almost like you come from a situation like I don't want to see myself in a situation ever again type of thing now that I I have the choice to be able to make a difference so that would be a positive yeah, is that what you're getting at? Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting at. But I mean, oh, a good example would be, I mean, I've heard this on other podcasts recently in terms of, or just in general, like, everyone's been broke at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say maybe more than once. And some people say, you know what, I've been broke once and that will never, 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 never happen again. Yeah. To the point, obviously, you use that as uh, motivation or inspiration to ensure you don't put yourself in that situation again. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, an emotional malaise, I think it's called. Um, the definition of malaise itself is one of discomfort and unease. So these definitions should should or may take you back. Withdrawal or social problems. Um, preferring to be alone, um, being secretive, sulking, sulking a lot, lacking energy, feeling unhappy, or being overly dependent. And then is anxious and depressed. Being lonely, having many fears and worries, needing to be perfect, feeling unloved, feeling nervous or sad and depressed. And then there's attention or thinking problems. Unable to pay attention or sit still, daydreaming, acting without thinking, being too nervous to concentrate, doing poorly on schoolwork, and unable to get your mind off thoughts. And then there's the last one, delinquent or aggressive. Hanging around kids who get into trouble, lying and cheating, arguing a lot, being mean to other people, demanding attention, destroying other people's things, disobeying at home and at school, being stubborn and moody, talking too much, teasing a lot, and having a hot temper. Where would you say you sat? So, that was you named about 55 things. <laughs> I you telling me. You could have said before. Yeah, nah, okay, cool. Okay, cool. What was the difference between me? Don't know. No, so I said obviously, deli- okay, so I'm talking about, right, so there was essentially. What, what, what is it you're trying to define first? Because that did sound like it was all in one. Okay, so it might sound like it was all in one. I'm not going to go over them all over again, all right? So, yeah, let's break down the yeah, sub, break sub, sub, sub Yeah, so there was, yes, I'm going to do So there was withdrawal. Or social problems, which is people obviously who tend to obviously want to be alone and stuff like that. I have that. And then I have that there's people who are anxious and depressed to again obviously being lowly, um, um, yeah, being lowly again, it's, it's, it's feeling unloved and stuff like that. And then there's attention and thinking problems. People who tend to struggle with sitting still and stuff like that, daydream I don't have that. and thinking I and stuff like that. I don't. I don't. I don't. Just sit, like you know, some people they literally that's like they always need to be doing something. Yeah. I don't have that. I do no, have time. I, don't, I, don't, yeah. no. I daydream a lot though. Okay. And then there's delinquent or aggressive. Well, we kind of know, kind of like you. I don't want to say kind of know, but these are the kids we see in school. I don't know. We say you see all, all these. You see all these kids in school, but I mean the ones who we are primarily talking about, or we have spoke about today. Mm. This is the box that they fit in. But the point I'm making is kind of what box would you say you kind of like sat in? I I would like? go across the board. Depends. I've I've. I've been a bit of a delinquent um, at times. I've also been a daydreamer. Um, what was the other ones? Um, so we've done delinquent. There was withdrawal and social problems, um, anxious and depressed, and attention or thinking problems. Um, I like to... I'm very uh, alone. Not, I wouldn't say lonesome, but I'm happy to be by myself. So yeah, so with, right. that, with that is withdrawal. I'm anxious. I'm not anxious about anything. But um, 
Yeah, I'm definitely in. I would say if you, I couldn't give a specific one, but I would say across the board because there are quite a few things in there that I can relate to. I am. I am. If I'm going back to, because this is obviously talking about small children, right? Yeah. So I'm going back to then. When I, when, I mean, I was fine being alone. Um, I grew up in a household where it was just me. But what I would say is, I definitely like. This is gonna sound so dumb to you guys right now, but there was times when my mom would be going to Jamaica in the summer holidays and I actually wouldn't go because I'd be worried I'd miss a party or something like that mm. or I used to find out about someone who had a party and I wouldn't no, invite I get that I, just I, I probably used to, shit. yeah so yeah, I probably yeah. used to feel like I used to hate missing out yeah. F-O-M-O used to really exist for me mm. I couldn't give two F's right now yeah of course I have proper, I proper love, love being alone in that well, company and that but that used to be a proper problem for me like literally to the extent where I probably missed two um, like vacations to like Jamaica because of that like, mum would ask me do you want to come I'd be like no I would be in how know. many trips would you say you missed out on minimum two maybe three really yeah I know quite much, I know I wouldn't do it now it must be mad I wouldn't uh, miss out on that now okay um, in close of emotional relays I'm going to read something out so there was well I can't even pronounce the name I think it was Yuri Bon Ben Brenner who did very well in saying that the eminent and Cornell University development developmental psychologist who did an international comparison of children's well-being, says, in the absence of good support systems, external stresses have become so great that even strong families are falling apart. The, hectic, the hectic, hecticness, instability and inconsistency of daily family life are rampant in all segments of our society, including the well-educated and well-to-do. What is at stake is nothing less than next generation particularly males who grow up in who, who who in growing up are especially vulnerable to such disruptive forces as the devastating effects of divorce, poverty and unemployment. The status is the status of American children and families is as desperate as ever. We are depriving millions of children of their competence and moral character. So there's just a little bit more. Um to, well, the, the point I was making, um, because I think it kind of touches on the <laughs> <laughs> the point I was making, uh, the point I was going to make, obviously, because I think it goes into the fact that um, there's a lot of. Anyway, let me read it first. Um, <laughs> and this is not the. This is not just an American phenomenon, but a global one, with worldwide competition to drive down labour costs, creating economic forces that press on the family. These are times of financial besieged. besieged fa- these are times of financially besieged families in which both parents work long hours so that children are left to their own devices, or or the baby, or the baby, or the babysits. Um, when more children, the baby yeah, babysits. Uh, no, it says the babysits. So don't say babysits. Oh. Um, when more children than ever are growing up in poverty, when one parent family, one, when when the one parent family is becoming ever more commonplace, when more infants and toddlers are left in daycare so poorly run that it amounts to neglect. All this means, even for well-intentioned parents. The erosion of all the countless small nourishing exchanges between parent and child that build emotional emotional competencies. So essentially, what he's saying is, obviously, due to obviously economic forces, children are now not getting obviously the attention that was actually needed. To which obviously I was kind of thinking, obviously, brought up a point of is there now like almost a, a versus where it's like morals and morals and values versus the pound or the dollar, to which is now affecting, dare I say. Um, I don't want to say well, affecting emotional intelligence in general, but I mean it's almost like a, a trickling effect where yeah, my parents are unfortunately obviously not having the opportunity to um, be around the children and spend obviously quality time with the children because they're having to work <clears> and stuff like that. I think that's been going on for years. Um, I think it's been more, and I don't want to get into conspiracy theory mode, but like where, especially when you, um, you look at like the, the black family in like America. I know that at some point that was like almost the biggest threat to their society was like a, a black strong household. So that's why they started trying to implement the that's when you get the things about the whole crack epi- epidemic and things like that, then you start getting a bit more of the one family, um one parent household and things like that. But to relate it back to the UK and um what's closer to home. Yeah, I definitely think it's a valid point where if you get one parent, um, you may not be able to do as much with that child and give them the 
help them with their things like homework and things like that. So mm-hmm. obviously, those emotional, uh, intelligent moments that you would be able to teach a child are going to be lost due to being out there working, trying to earn a cost so they can have food to eat and books to write and things like that. So yeah, I definitely think there's a, what's the word, a correlation. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's always been a contentious issue for like family, like a family versus like, yeah, well, family is family it? versus work. Like. Yeah, versus yeah, the balance basically. Yeah. yeah, are you giving your child enough attention? All that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think even with two parent households, there's there's still that issue. Like, say both both parents are working hard as they can, working to the bone, but they may not be earning enough to. Almost okay. Let's have some time off here. We'll have some time off there, so we can spend some quality time with our, our children. So, yeah, there's always going to be that contention mm-hmm. of working versus um, being spending time with a child. Cool. Um, pretty much closing. I mean, I've just so the last part of this chapter is the schooling of emotions, and the one is this probably which probably sold the book to me, if I'm honest. I think there's a lot of interesting parts in the book, but I felt. Um, the schooling of emotions where I think certain schools in the States where I think they were based a bit more on emotional intelligence rather than naturally curriculum and it kind of broke down things for kids so when they actually got themselves involved in situations in fact no they are classes they are classes specifically um, related to EI so as I mentioned obviously early in the book where I think there was an intervention over a period of I think it was 6 to 12 weeks um, with a group of students where they obviously there was a sign of improvement and stuff like that these, school, these schools in particular actually have classes related to EI, emotional intelligence, where they discuss it and they have conversation about it, to which obviously you see like great improvement. So I'll just go through it just very, very quickly. Um, so the main hope of a nation lies in the proper education of its youth. Um, now, there were some, to what I thought, amazing stories in this part of the book um, as to examples where children as young as eight years of age were able to articulate, obviously, how they felt and the issues and why they felt that way, understand each other's perspective and then resolve the issue. Uh, I'm going to read the traffic light system, um, which is in this chapter. Um, red light, sorry, red, sorry. Red, um, stop, calm, calm down and think before you act. Mm-hmm. Yellow, um, say the problem and how you feel. <laughs> Three, set a positive goal. Four, think of lots of solutions. Five, think ahead to the consequences. Um, and six, which is green, go ahead and try the best plan. Um, pretty much coming to the close of the book, and this obviously isn't a review, but at this, but at the point of reading this chapter, I thought this was a must for anyone in education because it was quite inspiring. Because it was quite inspiring read on how kids were able to resolve their differences because mm-hmm. I've mediated and resolved issues before with children up to the age of 18. But there seemed to be a direct correlation with the classes that were being taught as part of the curriculum called social science. Um, I, don't want to, I don't want to say too much because I like, to, I like, I like it to form part of my review. Um, but, last and, but my last and obviously simple question, how would, how would have a class such as social science enabled you Mm. What's I swear uh, I swear I don't what is, know. Like, I don't, what, what is social science? Okay, so yeah, so let me just break it down just maybe a little you, bit more. So you're saying that in America they've got actually got a class based around schools, emotional intelligence yeah. and social science is that is that class? Yeah, so there's some classes I've seen that some schools in America yeah. or specific schools I've seen within this book yeah. where they'll actually have an emotional intelligence classes. Okay, can actually give examples, loads of different examples. <clears throat> of obviously where it's been actually where it's been where it's been effective so there yeah. was I think a story in this book where um, a particular kid didn't well there was a confrontation between two kids and I think one kid didn't, in particular didn't like the way one kid actually spoke to another kid but instead of obviously having an argument and then going obviously into a fight they were able to articulate actually how they felt at the age of eight mm-hmm. why they felt why they felt that way and what it was in particular that actually set them off as such the triggers and then break it down, and then obviously apologise, and then understand obviously each other's point of view, and then move on. Yeah, I follow. Um, and yeah, pretty much my question is really, where do you believe social intelligence, the class, would have helped you? Um, it's hard to say for me. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard, hard but I think, I think in regards to possibly 
maybe even taking to that same example when you're having a disagreement and being able to calmly express yourself and not get so heated and actually listen to someone else because if you're getting taught those kind of skills at a young age you'll be able to carry those into different parts of your uh, relationships that you may have whether it's with your parents or whether it's with your peers or whether it's with your partner whether that be a male or female I think it'll definitely I think it's beneficial I think we should have those type of classes in schools in fact when it comes to the whole school system I think there needs to be a rehaul, so to speak, or just a, de a definite change needs to be made. But then, I think that I think that either there was a conversation I had amongst you guys or another group of friends that if we do change the school system, we're almost asking for society to change as well, because I don't think we can change one without right, the other, because it's also dictated in terms of how we get taught is how we get set up for the next stage of our life like for, for as it stands I would say the school system teaches you how to be a, a number in a, a house of or a company and you just become an employee and you get taught, I agree with that you just get you get taught what's the um, conveyor belt conveyor belt that's it you just get taught to, to be put on a conveyor belt and that's that's how you get taught we all get taught the same even though we don't learn the same. Mm. We don't. We all get taught at the same pace, even though we don't learn at the same pace. So it's just a conveyor belt for you to just tick off certain things, make sure that you can remember these facts and these numbers, and they send you off. So implementing that into our classes, hundred percent, I think would be beneficial for me. How would, how exactly would it have been beneficial beneficial for me personally? Going back to my youth, I don't know because I can't I can't relive that that part of my life but I definitely think it would be beneficial I think, yeah, I think it would be beneficial for anyone else that's currently in schools or coming into the next days of schools I agree with you and I think just to add to your point I, f I do believe that class would have to be implemented in primary school rather than high school to start yeah, off yeah, absolutely. I think at high school I'm just thinking someone has brought this class to me when I was 12, 13 you wouldn't have taken it seriously exactly yeah it would have been one of those muck about classes exactly um and again, if we're going to implement it in schools, we're going to have to implement it in the workplace as well, because you'll be having a next a cohort of students. <laughs> Not in my workplace, boy. You're going to be, no, but you'll have a cohort of students Sorry. that are going to be very emotionally intelligent. Then they're going to be going to work for people that may not be. Right. There's going to be some form of uh, clash, one way or another, where there's going to be a breakdown of whether these people are not performing or these people are not performing but there's there's not going to be a cohesion so that's why I say you've got to almost change the way people are in society as well if we're going to start implementing those sort of things because it's going to be relatable to what you do in a school to the workplace okay. I don't know I mean I look at I mean I, I think when I when I read that I looked at things maybe a little bit different because I think what you found there, well, certainly in, in that chapter, is you had kids who were, at the age of eight, able to actually articulate how they felt. Now, I don't know if you're able to uh, cast your mind back, obviously, to when you were eight, mm -hmm. but like, in teaching kids, in teaching and being around kids who are that age, that, at that age, is, is very, I don't want to say it's very rare, but because they they run off emotion, dare I say, rather mm -hmm. than, I don't want to say rather than logic, but they run off emotion, like, yeah. by and large. Yeah. Um, it's very difficult for them to then, obviously, break down how they feel, um, how they feel, why they felt that way, and then actually point out, actually, I think this is what the issue was, and can we rewind and, dare I say, apologise? I think you can in primary school. In pro I think you can in primary school, but, I mean, the point... Of, don't even point out. Uh, no, but, but by and large, so from, a, from just say from a class of 20, because right. this is being taught throughout the school, so you're going to say, obviously, if it's being taught throughout the school, then we're hoping, based on, obviously, what's in the book, that a lot of these kids have that rationale and are able to break things down. So I think what I'm kind of getting at is I personally believe that I would have been a more, I don't know, I think I would have been a more intelligent student, if I'm being honest, personally. And I think I would have been a bit, obviously, a bit more confident. I think there's certain things which I think some of the skill sets I have today, I think would have been a bit more honed. Yeah, no one's disagreeing. I think we're all in agreement that it would be beneficial. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, from my personal point of view, point of view anyway. Was you, was you for or against? I was for it, as long as it's, doesn't, it's not something that's kicked up in high school. It has to be from... Primary school, primary school. I think it is. Some of it partly is. I think we do learn a lot of emotional intelligence in schools, 
as it stands now, it just may not be um, dressed up as being social science. And okay, like just I mean, unfortunately, there was another another stabbing, obviously another another killing today as well in Annalee or where are they going again? But anyway, that was today at twelve. Right? So it's, I might, might have been another one now. Yeah, there was. Um, so yeah, there's been a few. You know, the radio yeah, the last, last couple of days. days yeah, so, um, obviously, I said that was my closing question. But mm. I mean, we're probably we're we're definitely at a stage, obviously, where we need that intervention, obviously, in schools and stuff like that. Mm. I mm. mean, it's probably an obvious question as to obviously what we would like the results to be. But how? Would you would you do? I mean, with the it's an honest, honest conversation, actually. What would you do with the with the kids we, we've got at this moment in time? Some, people, I think, some people are saying you write for generation, isn't it? Yeah, I, it's funny because I said I've had this conversation as well. I said it's really sad. And it's not just something that I necessarily want to say, but actually, I think, some people it's you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, no, I'll be honest. I lined you up for that story. You <laughs> lined you I'm, up. In fact, you know, you said that you. <laughs> no. No, I, I, I might have said no, that, so I wasn't going to disagree. I, I watched something the other day on the news, and this guy was, they, you know, when something happens, they interview someone. Someone black. Someone black that's based in flipping Illinois or wherever it is. Yeah. He was saying, he was speaking similar to what you say as well. He was saying, it might take 10, 15, 20 years for you to reap the benefits. But this is, this is months, see yeah. my problem with that, though? Mm. We've been hearing the same rhetoric from when we was that age. I, for some reason, it didn't hit home. Maybe I wasn't watching the news as much or paying as much attention. It didn't hit home as much as it hit home now. Yeah, no, definitely not because I think it's been more publicised. But I don't think, and I'm not, I'm not gonna say it was the same back then, and we was this and we was that. I don't think that at all. I think it, it's getting a lot more reckless and it's getting a lot more prevalent today. But the same, same sort of strategies. That we was talking like those same sort of conversations, like we sh- things should have been implemented from time ago to pre- to have prevented where we are now. Mm-hmm. Like these things that are happening now are not like oh shit, like the youths are now walking around with borers and they're now shooting people. Like it's been going on, maybe not as widespread or as easily accessible, mm. but it's been happening. So like, and maybe um, coming from a point of being involved in that world, but like. I don't look at it as, ah, this is some new shit. It's not new shit. No, it's not, no. Do you know what I mean? I think you said something that was really, I think, really interesting. It's become more reckless. Yeah. No, it is. Because to me, no, it is. It anybody is. and anyone can be involved now. Yeah, Whereas no, once upon a time... There was a certain... Yeah, yeah there was a certain... There was... There was there's there was a criteria once Yeah, once yeah, exactly. <laughs> there was. There was. <laughs> that, that is very funny. But there wasn't. Now, anyone's a, a, a nutter yeah. now. Yeah, like, yeah, truth be told. And I don't even want to use that word nutter. But, no, like, but it's, it's, it's yeah, anybody is now. And it's quite funny, actually, in some way, shape or form, that you would voluntarily want to be involved. Whereas before, let's say part of it was I had to. Yeah. Like, to, to get money and stuff like that. Obviously, Forget the, I mean, there's different aspects. Yeah, different aspects. That's what I mean. There's different, different aspects. aspects. When you're really young, obviously, money's not necessarily. Yeah. Um, it's being in the in crowd. Yeah. yeah. But then there comes a point, obviously, where money's a thing as such, and obviously, then that is part of the driving force. Whereas for some kids, like, it's cool to trap and bang. I don't know, like, <laughs> about where, I don't know where, like. It's not needed. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So. Um, but in regards to, to going back to the, the point we made in regards to a solution. I think Mace made a good point, and it's harsh to say it, but sometimes I, I, I'm not saying this is the answer either. But maybe we have to be like, okay, you know what? Let's write off this generation and start working on the next ones that are coming up, and really enforcing something that is going to be a deterrent for them to fall into this trap of of being so easily led into the bullshit. I don't know. I'm not saying that is a solution. I'm saying it, it's no. Um, it's been a something that's I mean, been well, offered. Mace said I, I, that that source came from myself. You know, just right off the generation. Yeah, no, I don't. I, I'm I'm not going to say that right is the solution. Yeah, no, the, the, yeah I was going to touch on that. I'm not. I'm not an advocate for it. But it's again this a and W boy. Yeah, writing them off isn't the case of right. Let's. Government put me in scenario. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's yeah, no, but it's, it's not that. It's putting it's, in the time and the time to help. Yeah, yeah, trying to change their mindset. Trying to change their mindset. I personally don't have a 
a 10 point solution or 10 point script to say, you know, if we follow these things, then let's go about it. If you did, there's actually a new job role that's been created by the government. Have you seen it? No. And it's head of something, something to do with trying to prevent okay. people from go. Yeah. Get to the drawing board. There is actually an advert out there they've put out. But I would, I would definitely like to be involved in the discussion and involved in our discussions and possibly coming up with a solution and mm-hmm. having these uh, open discussions to be able to be like, okay, well, have you thought about this? Have you looked over there? Have you looked at that? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Make, make something can make it our own and really implement it. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Any more viewpoints, guys? No, I'm for myself, man. No. Oh, um, I, definitely, I, I definitely feel emotional intelligence is important it impacts every, every part of our life um, as, as we discussed today it, it, it can be mentioned in all aspects of living and mm-hmm. society so yeah I think if, you, if you're not aware of emotional intelligence it's definitely a, something to, to dwell into and it can be def- definitely beneficial in your day to day life was that a wrap? so